you fellows lately? I have to go, sir. What? All right. I'll, I'll speak to Mr. Malley for you. But remember, no promises. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the Colonel. The Colonel. The Colonel! Yeah. Oh, Mr. Dobbs. Oh, Father Penny, working after the bell, admirable. I have a biology test to run off. Father, oh, filthy little minds. <laughs> I'll be through with the machine in a moment. Oh, I will be using it, Father. Um, youngsters want to know if Mr. Reese can come out and play. With the wee ones, Father Penny is your man. How about showing the fellows what a regular guy you are, huh, Father? Thanks, but my trust is being lost. Jeez, uh, uh, you're a flat bunch. Oh, Father, I thought this one would even the freshman here. It's wonderful how some people never seem to change. What are you looking for now? My keys. 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 Two for two. I suppose that's why you get on so well with the young ones, isn't it? Emotionally, you're only about a year. Uh, Mr. Chips, what did you teach me here anyway? Uh, obviously, nothing. That cuts both ways, doesn't it? Mm, I was the first layman they hired here, the old fathers. And look where it's come to. Charm, vitality. Sixty-nine. Oh, yeah, go. Please do. Cup of coffee, Father? No devil's brew. Joe, will you be here later? I've been here 30 years. I'll be here later. Uh, Paul. Oh, Father. Are you going to the gym? Yeah. Hey, how about a game of handball? I'll take a rain check on that. Listen, Paul, do me a favor. Keep an eye on the kids. Sure, what's wrong? Just watch them. If they get out of hand, clear the gym. Anybody in particular? Yes, all of them. I'll be in here or up in my office if you want me. OK, is that it? That's it. Tomorrow in the handball game, huh? Let you know tomorrow. Right. Paul, watch them. Yeah, sure, sure. One hundred. A shaft for the boys, is it, Father? Something to drive them back into the woodwork. Oh, yes, it's that time of year again, that long push toward Easter. It's always that time of year. Oh, but these are the dark months, Father. Or the hornbusters, depending on which side of the desk you sit. We shall see whose horns go first. There's the line. <laughs> Belly aching as usual, George. The goon squad. The pain, alas, is not in the belly, but rather in the adpodicum. In the ass to you. <laughs> George, you are very erudite. Jerome. Aye, my more clergy in the secular compound. Does this mean an inquisition? Cup of coffee, Yes, thanks, John. George, you didn't mean to send 15 kids to detention today, did you? Have they all been prescribed? They're all here. And 15 it was. Every one of them a killer at heart. Sending a kid to detention is serious, George. Thanks for the advice. Read through the list. I think you'll find the evidence warrants. Jerome, do you think I could speak to you for a moment? The headmaster is waiting. Yes, I know. Excuse me, Father. Jerome. Oh, it's about the car. Yes? Now, I know it's not my place to ask, but I wondered if you could find it in your heart to go with the You're right, Bob. Right. It's not your place. You were speaking to it just now. Why? Well, the boy is frightened, Jerome. It was an innocent prank, and an adolescent phone call. Why cruise to buy the boy for that? And you let it pass, wouldn't you? But I've let worse than that pass. But the cardinal's a good boy, perhaps a, a bit imprudent, but certainly there was no malice intended. Your solicitude is very touching, Dobbs. It always is. This does not concern you. Oh, but it does. The boy will be graduating in June. I'm late. Please. Don't, uh... Don't ask the headmaster to expel him, not for an innocent prank. And if I didn't, wouldn't that disappoint you? Oh, to Rome. Well, oh, as a favor. Oh, to you. To the boy. Don't be ridiculous. Would you like to see Exhibit A? The Travis boy. Number three. The male reproductive cells are formed in the organs known as the ball. <laughs> I don't believe it, Mr. Dobbs. What has happened to the Dale Christian tradition? Blasphemy, considering my office, my charisma. George generally sleeps in the reliquary, just behind the main altar. Father Griffin, you can see, has been a great comfort to me during my trial in this wilderness. 
seven trees, the three legs, and all the faculty. Why am I always the victim? Has it all been that bad, George? Every day I'm on the pillory of that podium, exposing myself to those monsters who sit there dissecting me as if I was some large anointed frog. Do you know what they call me? Do you have any idea? Well, George, it's never very flat. We're here if it's any good. King Kong. What? King Kong! Could have been a hell of a lot worse, aren't you? Yeah, quiet, you. One day I happened to ask them, who is this Kong individual that you keep referring to? A uh, new boy from the East, a uh, pious devotion? <laughs> Jeers and catcalls, of course. I gave him a test immediately. Oh, Father, you have our sympathy. There's nothing more deflating than an hour standing on a platform in front of those keen young eyes. Then they're gifted with a higher vision, then. Mm. Those unwanted ports moving up and down the stairwells. Poor shit. <laughs> Where are you going, George? In the shop. <laughs> Watch the dark stretches, George. George is all right. <laughs> What's wrong with them, Joe? Wrong? The kids. What is it with them? Well, they're always jumpy after midterms. It's their way of unwinding. That's what it's called, huh? You ever see 80 kids on a detention list before? You managed to nail a few yourself. Well, I'm getting old and crusty. Joe, something is wrong with them. Have you been watching them between classes on the stairs and the gym after school? Well, the gym I lead to young Mr. Reese. Well, watch them sometime. We've never had so many kids getting hurt around here. Hell, if it were just good old vandalism. It's protest. But they're going at one another. Deliberately, whenever they can, they try to hurt one another. Physically hurt. All right, I find that out to believe. Believe it. And then try to get something out of them. You ask how did it happen? and the kid will just look up at you and shrug. Yesterday, a brawl in the dormitory and a kid breaks an arm. The day before, they had an accident in the chem lab, and we can't get a thing out of them. We need your help, Joe. Well, if it's as you say, of course, but in 30 years here, I've never known a situation that collar could be controlled. We're getting a lot less starch in them nowadays. <laughs> it's different. I've been here three years, and now it's different. Hmm? You know, it used to scare the hell out of them being sent to detention. They'd be more scared of coming into my office than the headmasters. Now they seem to go out of their way to get sent down. Some of them, I think they're waiting for me to lay into them. What do you want me to do, Father? I'd like you to talk to Paul and Jerome and keep your eyes open to see what's going on with the boy. Well, I'll speak to Paul, Reese, but I don't think Jerome Massey is going to listen to a thing I have to say. Do you think it would be better coming from me? Well, from you or the headmaster, yes. It's not my business, but another teacher does in his classroom, I know. But sometimes we can push them too hard. I know he's always been rough on the boys, but he's one of our best teachers. That may be so, but from what the boys are telling me, he's even rougher on them now. They're only children. They can take just so much pressure. Then who knows what way they'll find to let it out. Well, there was that boy a few years ago, uh, Walter Paxson. Yes, I know about Paxson. But from what I hear, it wasn't all Jerome's fault. Perhaps not, but I do know this. The boy could not measure up to Jerome's standards. He couldn't take that pressure. So one afternoon, he wanders down to the furnace room and tries to aim himself from the pipes, just like that. Fortunately, one of your predecessors was patrolling the halls at the time. All right, Joe, I'll speak to Jerome. Thank you, Father. Another cup of coffee? No, thanks. Time for me to start patrolling the halls. <laughs> What's wrong? Nothing. I'm thirsty. Who's with the kids? One of the seniors. We don't... One of the seniors is a kid. Paul, you hurry right back. Is it okay if I treat the kids? Yes. Don't let them leave the empties around. Any ideas, Joe, please? Oh, I'll think about it. And let's see more over here, huh? Shake a leg, Paul. Hey, Joe, mm -hmm. what are you going to think about? Oh, problems. We worry about the boys. What's wrong? I don't know. Neither does he. You never have any problems with him, do you? I never had problems with anyone. <laughs> oh, there'll be real drinks tonight. And a feed, if I remain ambulatory. Thanks for that chance tonight. Oh, oh something, huh? Date. New girl? No, my age. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's shopping your wit. But uh, payday is two days away. What's a witty guy like you using for money? It's OK. You don't have to bail me out this time. No? I finally busted open my piggy bank. Oh, but I'm afraid conquest does come higher than that, boy. My God, you're a dirty old. <laughs>
Yeah, what's the last one you so late? Flogging a kid? I'm sure that Mr. Malley has a perfectly good reason for being here, but let me remind you. You are one of us now. I'm sorry, I forget. Well, don't forget. Hey, Joe, do you want to hear something funny? Mm. He still scares me, Lash. Mm -hmm. He scares the hell out of me. I keep expecting him to uh, send me down to detention. You know, every time we get a free period together, I go hide in the john for 40 minutes. You're not serious. So help me, pretty <laughs> stupid, huh? It sure is. Those poor kids, I really feel for them. That lousy red mark book of his can stop a heart. I mean, what's he doing working with kids anyway? Well, I'm sure you learned some Latin from Mr. Mallet. Oh, I learned what? I learned English, too. It wasn't nearly so painful. Oh, well, that's because I'm the grand old man of the faculty. Early tenure, beloved of all the boys. You know, you're the reason why I wanted to become a teacher. <laughs> I figured, nice, cushy job, you don't have to know much. In fact, you don't have to know much of anything. Nobody teaches English one for 30 years. I'm guilty, but it's my vocation, and I can remind you it's your vocation now, too. So don't you suppose we should be getting back to the gym where you're supposed to be? <laughs> I guess so. Oh, Mr. Matt. Please? You're around late today. Pardon? What are you using? <clears throat> this is late. Yes, I suppose it is. Yeah, me, I can never get out of here much before five myself. I get involved with the uh, kids and basketball. You're enjoying it here? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yes, the kids are great. Well, you're not much older than them yourself. Oh, I guess not. Isn't that the sound of the Raptors being pulled down? What? Your charges are kicking up their heels. He's been suspended. Mm -hmm. For how long? Indefinitely. Well, that's a bit harsh, don't you think? For an innocent prank. For our seniors, I miss all that work. I'm sorry you weren't consulted first. One of your boys, isn't he, Doc? So are they all, Jerome. So are they all. I suppose the suspension was the headmaster's idea. You would have preferred expulsion, of course. Well, why don't you ask him yourself? I understand you'll be going down to see him as soon as I've left the building. Why should I want to see the headmaster? Well, the boy has given him to understand you'll be going down to plead for him. Well, I, I made no promises. Well, of course, and that you never do. You are misinterpreted as usual. Jerome, you're making it quite clear this does not concern me. And when has that ever stopped you before? Ha <laughs> ha, that's not fair. Well, I'm never fair, Dobbs. Surely your boys must have told you that. Jerome, we spend so much time in this room looking for what? I am trying to work, Dobbs. Right. Sorry that I spoke to the boy. It was a mistake. You deliberately set them against me, the boys. You always have. It's all in your mind. It is not in my mind. You have got to stop undermining my position here. You still don't see it, do you? After all these years, you always stop me setting them against you. It's yourself. Oh. The boys are afraid of you. You terrify them. It's as simple as that. Oh, simple enough. You encourage it. Whatever their absurd fears are, you magnify them. Do I? And what about the other counselors and the headmaster? Do they encourage it as well? Mr. Reese is uncomfortable <laughs> being in the same room. Oh, yes, you've got yourself an ally there. No one is alive with me against you. Another in your long line of McCardles. Well, I would rather the McCardles, Jerome, than the Paxtons, because it's a hell of a lot easier on the conscience. That's the truth, isn't it? If the boy tried to kill himself, he couldn't take your pressure. The boy shouldn't have been in this school to begin with. The work was much too hard for him. Maybe not, but as long as he was here, he was our responsibility. He managed to survive his other class. Oh, yes, your class. I guess. And what sort of criterion is that? Oh, oh, oh well, <laughs> none, I suppose. Look, Jerome, your command of Latin and Greek may be awesome, but you have no knowledge of boys. All I'm asking is that you ease up on Macaro. Forget methods. Forget personalities. After all, Jerome, what malice can there be in a child? Now you listen to me, Dobbs. I will suffer since I must the humiliation of this room with you and the daily spectacle of a pathetic old man living on the affection of adolescent boys. That too is degrading as it is, but I will not be lectured by you on my responsibility. You are not to see the headmaster. You are not to interfere. <laughs>
When I got to him, he was crouching up against the wall. I, I raised his head. When he saw me, he pulled himself away from me and screamed no at me. He was trying to get away from me, trying to fight me off until I grabbed him. And, and the other kids, they didn't do anything. They just threw back. So I grabbed him and I, I brought him. I don't know where I was bringing him. Oh, you did the right thing. You brought him up here. Joe, he didn't want me to stop him, I swear. That doesn't make sense. We all know those boys. Joe, I saw it. What you saw was just a schoolboy brawl. A few that got out of hand. No, not in this case. The boy obviously wanted to be hurt. And there have been other incidents here the past few weeks, more and more violent and senseless. Come on, boy, I'll, I'll buy you a drink. No, Joe, I want a drink. Come on, it'll do you good. Is this Paul? This complete Paul? Yes, it is. What will you do to those boys, Father? I don't know. How can I expel 11 boys? 11? Why this half the class? Are they still in your office? Father Gerard's with them. Well, I'll send them back to their rooms for now. Wait for me in my office. We'll decide what to do with them when I'm through here. Coming up, Joe? No, no. Paul, I'll wait for you downstairs. Father, if you want me to, I'll go downstairs and get the story from those boys straight. They'll always level with Joe Dobbs. Well, they'll have to level with me as well, Joe. Thanks anyway. You're all. I'd like to talk with you a bit before you leave. The nurse leaves my mother at five. She really shouldn't be left alone. It won't take long. Paul? I'm sorry, Father. The kids, they like me. Paul, it wasn't your fault. You did everything you could. Why don't you take Joe off on that drink? Let me worry about this. No, I, I gotta go close to the gym. You can leave it for now? No, I, I wanna go in there. There's gotta be something I missed. I mean, those kids, they wanted me to hit them. Now, why would they do a thing like that? Jerome, about McArdle. Let's we'll say we let him back in on Thursday. I think three days is long enough. The suspension was to be in death. That was before this incident. Besides, he's not a bad fellow from what I hear, and he's never been in serious trouble before this. Oh, well, yes, he's had his champions, I imagine. Forgive me, Father, but this sort of leniency has a way of getting back to the Well, let it then. Maybe that sort of leniency is what we need around here right now. Sleep on it, all right? I don't foresee any changes overnight. Sleep on it anyway. How have they been for you lately in class, the boys? My students, I'm afraid, don't lend themselves to lengthy analysis. Then you underestimate your students. If anything, I'm being excessively charitable. They might spend a little more time in their Latin and less on their coiffures. But that's hardly to the point, is it? No, hardly. Jerome, are you aware of what's been going on in the classrooms? Some of the teachers are losing any kind of control, especially the priests. And I'm not just talking about Father Penny. It is the teacher's role to enforce discipline, to insist on it, and with the cooperation of the administration. Under ordinary circumstances, yes. But the classroom pranks have become more than pranks, more than just adolescent defiance. What they're doing is deliberate and violent. Why? I'm sure I don't know, Father. Jerome, it frightens me the way the boys have started going at one another. We've all got to understand what it is driving these boys. Perhaps even revise our methods for a while. So I'm being a little too rough on them, as that is? If you put it that way, yes. Why? Because I expect them to do a little work? For 40 minutes a day? Possibly even six? That's not what I'm talking about. Well, then I don't know what you're talking about. Jerome, you've been here longer than I have. That puts me in an awkward position. Why should it? You're the headmaster. So I am, all right. Everything right on the line. Jerome, I want you to ease up on those boys. I see. Do you? Perfectly. And uh, I suppose you can suggest an appropriate pose as well? A friend? A chum? Jerome, don't make this any harder on me. Oh, Mr. Dobbs, of course, that's it. Kindly paternal. I'm not asking you to assume any kind of pose. I'm just saying we all must adjust to these peculiar circumstances. No. Jerome. No. And that's final? That is final. No, Jerome. I'm afraid that can't be final. Just what do you think I've been doing to these boys? I have been teaching here for ten years. My students have always been important to me. I wouldn't be here if that were true. Jerome, I have great respect for you as a teacher, but I know your methods. You know what you've heard, my methods. It's not what I've heard. It's what I see happening here that concerns me. And what has that to do with me? 
my methods and not Dobbs' methods, why must you always judge me by him? I am not judging you by Joe Dobbs. I am paid to teach Latin and Greek. That is the extent of my responsibility to the school. And the human element. I am not their chum. I will not tolerate laziness or stupidity, but I'm not an ogre. Not what Dobbs would have me. It's not what Dobbs would have you that concerns me. It's what the boys would have you. What they scrawl on the walls and pass to each other under the desks. I'm not interested in what is written on the walls of a lavatory. Well, maybe you should be aware of it. The obscenity, the malevolence directed against you in this school. Oh, I'm aware of it, the malevolence. I've been made aware of it. Are you fully aware of it? And what is that? A note some of the boys were passing. I am not interested in notes. Read it, please. Where did you get this? That doesn't matter. I have a right to know where this filth came from. That does not matter. What does matter, there have been other notes uglier than that. From whom? From which boys? I want their name. All of them directed against you. None of the other teachers, Jerome. They wouldn't write such things about me, the boys. Jerome, I'm sorry. You must cooperate. Whether you like it or not, there are 200 boys in this school, and more than any of you, they're my responsibility. And he's reached you all, hasn't he? Just as easily as he's reached those 200 boys. He's the malevolence. He's the obscenity. Dobbs wrote that note. You believe that? I know it. I know what he's capable of. What you're saying is insane. Jerome, I know what the boys think of you. I've seen the ways they react to you. They react the way he's taught them to react. They're all his boys. This room is his. The school is his. Everything here is his, and it's all being used against me. Dobbs wrote that note. There were no names. It was just handed you, and you know what I'm saying is true. No, Jerome. I took the note from those boys. That's, that's not possible. That's not possible. Not possible. God, the hate, the hate between us. 
How terrible, isn't it, that the, that the two of us should find ourselves together here, two such second-rate human beings, two such empty lives shackled together here. My life is not empty, not with all that I have here. Now listen to me, Dust. Listen to me. My mother is very ill. Yes, I know, and I know the strain you must be under, but why take that out on the boy? She's dying. I have no defense against that. If I... If I go along with you, if I try, will you at least have a little pity on her? Well, of course I pity her. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? I don't think I do. There have been other calls besides McArdle's. Someone else is calling her. Terrible calls, terrible lies about me. Please, Dobbs, no more. Do you even know what you're saying to I me? I know exactly what I'm saying to you. For her sake, Dobbs, no more. I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Whatever it does to me, I'll try it. But please, leave her alone. Because you must know that now. There are kinder ways to destroy me.
Why don't I know it here, son? Here, count these. There should be 30 of them over there. Yes, sir. Actually, I suppose now there's only 28. All right, O'Donnell, I want you to give it to me straight. What happened in the chapel yesterday? Well, I uh, don't know anything about that, sir. Oh, now, that might be a good enough answer for the headmaster of Father Griffin, but this is Mr. Dobbs asking. Now, you do know that a boy was beaten up and left in our chapel. I want to know how any boy in this school could do such a thing. Well, no, sir, I wasn't there. I'm not saying you were, and I don't want any names. I just want to know how boys in this school could desecrate their own chapel. O'Donnell! What are you doing in here? Oh, he's helping me, Father. Where's your next class? Library. Are you finished with him, Mr. Dobbs? Well, I don't know. Am I, O'Donnell? Yes, sir. Are you sure, boy? Yes, sir. All right. Take those books, put them on the desk, and watch them. <coughs> O'Donnell, three minutes. You've got three minutes to deliver those books and get to class. Good morning, Paul. Morning. Father, I hope you have some good news for us this morning. I'm afraid not, Joe. We're canceling all masses and services in the school until further notice. You can't be serious. The boys need to feel the presence of God more than ever now. I'm very serious. All students will report to their homerooms for study during the chapel hour. You hear that, Paul? Yeah, I'm afraid I did. Well, I've got a little more for you. School building is closed immediately after the last period. You're locking the kids out of the building. You're locking God out of the building. Any boy found in the building after 3.15 is on suspension. There was no faculty meeting on this. That, we were not consulted. That's straight from the headmaster's office, and Joe. And what about my conferences with the boys? You're going to have to take that up with them. I will, Father. I will. I suppose this knocks out interference. It knocks out all extracurriculars. And Paul... The gym is out of bounds except for gym classes. Father, wait a minute! Joe, yeah. Frank is headmaster. This is the way he wants to handle the situation. I'm sorry, Joe. So am I, Father. So am I. Fifteen minutes to get out of the building. If he's running that scared, why open it at all? Don't worry about it. It's not like I've been here 30 years. Nobody's held anything back from me in all that time. It's not going to start now. Oh. Come on, Inouye. Oh. The gym will be open again for you. Come here, Father. They'll open it. Here's your mark book, Mr. Mallon. My mark book? Where did you get that? I found it. You must have dropped it. How could I have done that? I had it in my last class with me. I'm sure I did. Me? I'm always forgetting things. I never go to class without my mark book. I gave back a history test once. Forgot all about recording the marks. I've never done that before. Joe told me to bluff it. Tell him I had to look over one of the essay questions again. I guess Joe can uh, hand them a better line. Excuse me. Just now, I found myself walking through the halls. I, I don't think I knew where I was going. Sir? After my last class, what, what could have come over me like that to, to wander through the halls? I, I lost my way. I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Can I? Uh, what happened to me? I'll get you up. No, nobody. I'll be all right. Are you sure? I know I have this in class with me. Look, Mr. Malley, are you all right? I am not apologizing, and I would take it I would be very happy if you could simply forget this stupid episode. It was inexcusable of me. Well, don't worry. You don't have to apologize. I'm not apologizing. I, I blacked out, that's all. I've been under a, a great strain. Yes, I know. Your mother. Yes, my mother. Her condition is much worse these last few days. Look, if there's anything I can do... Is George Penny in here? No, he's not, Father. Well, if he comes in, will you tell him 2C is waiting for him to teach biology? Sorry, I was in levitation. And I just couldn't get down. <laughs> what does it take to make that guy sober up?
creating a test, huh? No, composition, Caesar. Ah, Caesar. Delia es Agni Divina. Entres partes. Omnis divisa in partes tres. You probably remember what a brain I was in Latin too. The old two B, the clod in the last seat next to the window. That seems like a hell of a long time ago. Nine years, in fact. A lot can happen in nine years. I've been trying to, you know, fit in. Are you apologizing to me? Well, yes, because I'm afraid you don't have any respect for me as a teacher. <laughs> That's what I think if you really matter. Well, yeah, we're sort of... Colleagues? Yes, I suppose we are, sort of colleagues. <laughs> and it's time we came to grips with that. Yeah, because I'm scared of you. I know it's ridiculous, but you scare me to death. It means a lot to me to build up enough courage just to talk to you like this. I hate like hell to have to hide in the john every time we have a free period together. No, I'm sorry, I make you so uncomfortable. It's not you, Lash. It's me. Hmm. Afraid of me. You're still. Well, I, why not? <laughs> I'm a frightening, a menacing figure. I'm sure you've heard that over and over. Coupled with your own memories of my classroom tyranny, I'm sure that's been reinforced for you over and over. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I'll get out of your way. I'll, I'll go work in the chair. No, wait, wait. wait. You stay around late, do you? Yeah, I often stay late. Hmm. A singularly stupid class, wasn't it? Your old 2B? Yeah, the worst. The worst. <laughs> I have a newspaper clipping somewhere. Uh, that was your 2B, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you boys had left it on the desk for me. And you weren't too happy about it. Sometime I must look for that clipping. Something about... Uh, it was a student stabbing a teacher. Ah, yes. I remember feeling uh, vaguely threatened at the time. <laughs> Can I get you something to drink and coke? No, thank you. I have some tea. That, uh, that became a famous incident among you boys, didn't it? Uh, something to add to the lash catalog of infamy? Yeah, you had us kneeling in the aisles. Did I? For 40 minutes. Well, I suppose that's the sort of reminiscing you boys do when you get together, hmm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you keep in touch? Sometimes. Dwyer, do you ever see him? Not since graduation, no. Dirty fingernails. <laughs> but a first class mind. One of the best I've ever taught. Peter Jackman. No, he's still in the seminary. Well, he may actually pick up a bit of a laugh. <laughs> it was Jackman who put that clipping on my desk, you know. You knew that. Oh, not, not then. No. I had a Christmas card from him once with a note. Oh, I hear from you boys sometimes, uh, more often than you might think. <laughs> a singularly stupid class, a trying year, like all of them, I suppose. You boys are afraid of me, I know. Well, maybe I am too hard on you. Maybe I shouldn't be teaching, at least not in a high school. See, it's not that I dislike you. It's just that your children, and some of you are so slow. I don't have much patience with the slow ones. You'll find that the pattern of one's life can be formed so suddenly without realizing it. So suddenly, and for some of us so irrevocably. And if it's wrong, well, one comes in and goes through the motions thinking at first that the next year will be different, and gradually realizing that no, the next year will be the same, and the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. And if that's the way it's to be, well, that's the way it's to be. And so I save newspaper clippings and Christmas cards. Why do I save them? I don't know. But wouldn't it be comforting one day to take out all of those little bits of the past and lay them all out on the floor like paths through a maze and 
and see what the course of my life has been. Perhaps see what's been there all along, tucked away in a drawer somewhere. If I hurt you, any of you boys, I'm sorry. But that's the way I am, the only way I know. No, don't answer it. I, I don't want to speak to it. Hello? No, this is Mr. Reese. It's for you. It's your mother's nurse, Mrs. Carter. Yes? I see. I see. All right. Yes. Thank you. You're all? Been there with her for that. nice saint like you doing in a place like this. <laughs> there you are, 10 o'clock and nothing's well. You are missing the high point of the faculty meeting, the booze. Is everybody still down there? Ah, yes. The faculty having met an extraordinary session has dragged its collective ass to the dining hall for they are raising their glasses like a wall against the plague. The theory seems to be we survived the Colosseum, we'll survive this bloodbath. We are dancing on the ruins. <laughs> you know, George, I don't think I'm ready for that tonight. Uh, <laughs> don't you go craggy on me too. I came up here to get away from all those craggy faces partying around down there. Isn't that why you sneaked away? No, I had a history test to run off. Anyone left to take it? <laughs> it's nice to know that there are still some twisted minds left. Oh. Am, am I seeing things here? Have you got your towel with you? Yeah. Some of that stuff on Mally's book. Oh, Those kids. Dang, kids. Playing jokes like that on people. You should have seen what they put in Mally's book. Oh. Uh, oh, yes. They've, they've made the go to that map. They've, they've decided who, who the ass is going to be. <laughs> Father Headmaster has pinned the tail on the donkey. Very smooth. Thank you. One never knows where liturgical reform will lead. George, do you ever think about going over the wall? All the time. I was only kidding. I wasn't. You had a bad influence on me, George. 
Don't you be put off by the cassock. Its sanctity is, is becoming bigger than the Immaculate Conception. <laughs> Come on downstairs with me. We'll shake them off. No, I'm going home. Ah, Father Headmaster will be displeased. Tough shit. Ah. Spunk. You may make it out of here yet. Look, I'm sorry, George. This place is beginning to get to I don't know why you say that. The chapel sealed, boys flagellating themselves. It happens in the best of cloisters. But we're not to think about that tonight. No, no, no. Orders from on high. None of us may make it out of here alive, but tonight we're having fun. <laughs> Somebody dropped their glass a few minutes ago, and we all reached for our rosaries. <laughs> You're telling your beats more than you're telling me. You wouldn't really go over the wall, would you, jerk? I've taken vows. May I use the late toilet? The urinals downstairs have suspicious wires running from the flushers. <laughs> I will be blown up decorously or not at all. George, don't write on the walls. I will leave that to the already moving finger. <laughs> Joe, I don't understand. 
understand why would I want to hurt myself? What is in this building that would make me want to hurt myself? Oh, you cut yourself. Let's leave it at that. That's though. not enough. Well, it'll have to be enough. You know, you're pretty excitable. I meant to tell you that downstairs. Why? Because I got pissed off at the meeting? Let me tell you something, Joe. Your friends downstairs are panicking. They're just looking for a scapegoat. Something has gone wrong in this school, and they're all looking for something to pin it on. And it all looks like you've elected Jerome. He's your victim. Victim? Victim. Look it up. Nobody says it's just Jerome. Well, you were all sure hinting at it. I remember a time when you were afraid to be in the same room with Jerome Malley. Well, maybe that was more my fault than it was his. I never knew him before the other day. We talked. Just before he got the phone call about his mother. Oh? You didn't see him at that funeral this morning. I had a class. Well, you should have seen him. I've seen enough of him. He's not the same person. If it means anything to you, he's not here now. He hasn't been here in three days. And I'm scared. Whatever it is that is in this building is in here now. And Joe, the kids are in the building. The kids? Here? I know they're here. I heard them. Now? Why, Joe? What are they doing here? What are they looking for? They're certainly full of questions tonight, young man. Well, maybe that's because nobody around here seems to be coming up with any answers. What about you, old man? You've always had him. Okay, tell me. Why are the kids in the building? Well, they're not in the building. They are! The boys aren't here. I'd know it if they were. I'll show you. Anderson? Blake? Cooper? Decker? Parker? Gorman? Hilton? Lent? McAllister J, McAllister S, Shepard, Tupper, Wall. Zimmerman, Young, <coughs> and Benny Zell, my English class from 1972. Well, I've, I've, uh, I've taught over two. Thousand boys, I can't be expected to be met. Other men's sons, over two thousand. They've always valued their friendship, their affection. And those boys, years of it. You know me, you boys. It's you I trust, not myself, but, but you, all you boys. I've been in this building thirty years. And what you see. What all those boys have seen in me, what you see in me, that must be what I am, truly. Isn't that so? Well, what you see is all there is. There's nothing to be frightened of. I'm scared. This place scares the hell out of me. Oh, it's just a school, for God's sake. Well, I know it's just a school. I went here. I know every room, every corridor. I can take you downstairs. I can show you my locker, my desk. But it's changed. Something has come into this place. Your imagination, that's what? No, Joe, it's not my imagination. It's something real. And it's real enough to touch. And I've touched it. I've touched it. Ah! Ah, all right, sir. No. to me yesterday at the funeral, Father. Thank you. I had hoped that more of the priests would come. Go home now, Jerome. Oh, oh I, I have a class. I don't think that's wise. Oh, I'm all right now, Father. Thank you.
Frank. I know I saw it, Bill. Then go easy on him, huh? I only wish I could. Make sure his glasses are being covered, all right? Oh, Father, good morning. Good morning, Jerome. I assumed you'd be out for the rest of the week. Oh, it's better for me this way. Your classes are being covered. No need for that. Father Brooks been reassigned to your second year Latin, and I'm handling your Greek class myself. I've never had another teacher take over my classes. A week without me, and they'll forget everything. That's not our major concern right now. Well, if this is still a school, then it should be. The boys are lazy. You've got to keep that one. The new assignments are permanent, Jerome. As of first period today. Jerome, this is very painful. Well, then, please, don't. There's no need. There's... You see, I thought it over. Of course, you're right. I'll, I'll change my methods. I'm afraid that doesn't matter now. Well, just, just give me a little time to get my thoughts in order. You see, I can explain. I'll, I'll revise the course. We can discuss that. There's nothing to discuss. I know what you've been through the past few days. You don't! You wouldn't be saying this to me now if that were true. I, I won't be dismissed. Not, not from, for, for something I'm not responsible for. I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll, uh, I'll go against what I believe, but I won't be dismissed. Not from this school, and please. Not now. I'll change my methods. This is addressed to you. Do you know what it is? Yes. Have you seen them before? Yes, but that doesn't... Pictures like this? You're teaching young boys. Whatever there is in my life, I've never brought it into this school. Well, I'm afraid it has come into this school now. How long have you been receiving this kind of thing here? Here? Never. Jerome, there's no point in lying to me. No, never here. At my home, but not here. But, but that shouldn't surprise me, should it? That's why Father Griffin was so concerned about me. I imagine it's all over the faculty by now. Mr. Malley is, after all, just another dirty joke. Has it been passed down to the students yet? Scrawled on all the walls and, and passed under every desk? I'm sorry, Jerome. You do understand my position. Yes. Yes, of course I do. But, but how can there be so much evil in us? How can it be so easy to select a victim and, and turn everything against him? Father, try to understand, please. Those pictures are being sent to me, deliberately sent to me. Sent to you? Yes, I have nothing to do with them. But they're addressed to you. You've involved the school, all of us, in this. But I'm trying to stop them. I've always destroyed them before. I you have no that. other choice. You admit you've received them before. But they're being sent to me, don't you understand? Sent to you by whom, Jerome? You'd believe me. You'd believe that such deliberate malevolence could be directed at me by Dobbs. Dobbs! No, I do not. But if it's the truth. We both know that something like that cannot be true, don't we? And even if it were, it's a truth I can't afford to face. Not now, Jerome. Not with everything else I have to face here. And you dismiss my whole life, that simply. And what am I? Jerome, please, let's end it. End it? <laughs> and how easily that solves the problem of Mr. Matty. Something so small, so ugly. Anything would have worked with me. I think it would be best if you left this school as soon as possible. Best for who? For all of us! No! How can I make you understand it's true? He is destroying me! My mother first and now me! There must be some way I can make you understand what is happening to me is true! He can't win this easily, can he? Jerome, I'm sorry. Wait! You're a priest. Before everything else, you're a priest. If I if I got down on my knees to you, would you believe me? That's enough, please. If I humiliate myself before you, if I if I make my confession to you, then you'd have to believe me. Bless me. That's enough. Me. Bless me for I've sinned. Forgive whatever's weak in me. That's Forgive enough. Forgive whatever's vulnerable. Forgive me for the hate I want to do. That's that's enough. But but you are a priest. You can't deny me confession, not if you're a priest. Your contract with this school is terminated, and I forbid you, I absolutely forbid you to go up to those boys. Then, then what are you, all of you? I have a plan. 
all I get. Oh, I told you I heard that. All right, later. No, now, second period. There's no way he can stop me, you see? I'm not responsible for any of it. And if I tell him that again, he's a priest. He's a priest before everything else. If I, if I explain that to him, if I tell him when my mind is clear, you see, when I can think more clearly, then he's got to believe me. Because everything I said is true. All of it is the truth. Jerome, I can't follow you. I can't understand you. Let me get somebody. No, there is nobody. Paul, there was no need. There was no reason to torment her like that. And an old woman who was dying, my mother, he was sending those pictures to my house. He was funny with those lies about me, destroying her with those lies about me. And all of it deliberate, who, deliberate. Hold your own hold. Stop, stop, show. How can I protect myself against somebody like that? He knows me. He knows how to break me. What defense can I have against somebody who could know me so completely against so much hate? You don't belong here, Jerome. You ought to know that by now. He wasn't well, so I told him to stay here. Yes, it's all yours now, Dobbs, isn't it? What you've been telling me, all the old lies, the old accusations, everything that's wrong in his life is Joe Dobbs. Well, look at him, for God's sake. I am, Joe. How could you hate me so much to do this? To leave me with nothing? How could there be so much hate? Joe, tell me the truth. What truth? What is he talking about? What fool? I don't know. What have you been doing to his mother? He's lying! What have you been doing to him? Nothing I said. Destroying me? Destroying me? No, devil! Get up! Wait! Uh. He's right! You're his boys! All of you! Will God help you? Because he's filled you with it! The dark! The dark that makes him a destroyer! Devil! Let him go! Get away from us! Final this morning, Father. Down in that court there. I'm just picking up the pieces. That's always been my job. Do you mind if I add this? It was his. Sure. Why would he kill himself, Paul? Why? What will you do now? I don't know. Teach someplace else, maybe? Maybe not. It all doesn't seem too important right now. You've been a good teacher, Paul. There's been better. If there's any way I can help. No. No, you've got enough to do here. Ha! <laughs> Take another look. There's nothing to do here anymore, except lock it up. Lock it up? Seal the building like you sealed the chapel, and then what, run? As far as I can, which is not very far after all, not as far away as you can run. And what are you running from? Do you know? From what I don't understand, from whatever it is that's been let loose in this building. Paul, I was upstairs just now, and I had to stop. I couldn't go down the corridor. I know there's nothing there, but I was afraid of what? The dark? Why should 
shouldn't I be afraid? Don't stay in here, Paul. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. I still you game of handball, don't I? Goodbye, Paul. Go into the confessional. You should have 
have been so easy for me to follow him in there. Lift my hand, pull aside the curtain, kneel down there beside him, so easy, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't confess. Not there, not to a priest, not in the dark. Not in the dark of a confession. It had to be here, let me just see with you. My boys, who oh got the car, James, Carl, Travis, it had to be here with you, yes. <laughs> oh, please. Please. Audience. <laughs> yes, yes, all.